All right, so in the Rapture community, you'll see a lot of people blow what is called a shofar. Um, it's like a round thing that goes up like this. It's like an old-fashioned trumpet that they used to use, the Hebrews. And when people speak about the Rapture, they're talking about waiting for a blast of some type of trumpet like that, uh, a shofar from heaven, so to speak. Uh, however, this is false, and I'm going to show you and prove my point as to why it is not going to be a trumpet blast. What it will be is a voice, and um, that is a pattern for us, I believe. Now, if we look here in 1 Thessalonians 4, which there's only one rapture, okay? There's guys out there talking about three raptures, mid, tr you know, pre, mid, and post. This is total ridiculousness. Paul tells us about the rapture, okay? And there's all kinds of stuff floating out there, just like this. But it says this in 1 Thessalonians 4. Now, you need a King James Bible. If you don't have a King James Bible, it's going to tell you something else. But this is what the King James says. And the King James backs itself up in Revelation chapter 4. Now, notice how we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 4 is the number for door. Door, okay? And then Jesus in Gematria equals 444. Jesus said, I am the door, okay? He came in the 4,000th year. On the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, which are said to be the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, but yet Jesus also declares the glory of God. So you see the connection with the four, the sun, the moon, and stars, and Jesus. And then in Psalms 19, it says that the heavens are speaking to all the world. Well, doesn't Jesus speak to all the world too? You see the connections here, how everything is tied in. The gospel is all around us, literally. It's in a book, it's in the heavens, it's in the air, it's in our hearts, it's everywhere. So, this is what it says in First Thessalonians chapter 4 about the rapture. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, that means survive, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So the first thing we see is a shout. That is not a trumpet blast. With the voice of the archangel. So now we see a voice. A voice and a shout. No trumpet yet. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first trump of God that word trump in the Strong's Concordance first of all it's not trumpet there's a difference between a thing that is called a trumpet and the noise that a trumpet makes which is called a trump and here in the Bible it says the trump of God that word in the Strong's Concordance as you can see behind me is number 4536 in the concordance Greek, and it is a reverberation. That's a sound. There's a shout, a voice, and a sound. The sound of God. There's no trumpet anywhere mentioned here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And to back this up, we go to Revelation chapter 4. Notice the 4 again. And in the first two verses, it says this. After this I beheld, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Notice the door from heaven. Same exact thing as 1 Thessalonians 4, Revelation 4, the number for door. Jesus said, I am the door, right? It's all connected. And the first voice which I heard, voice was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. There's a voice as a trumpet talking with him, saying, Come up hither. Is that a literal trumpet? No. It's using the word trump and the word trumpet to... Describe the sound of what is going on. It's God talking. Just like when the light shined about Paul and God talked with him. Same 
same pattern, guys. Say there's no trumpet, no trumpet blast. And then it says this. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. No trumpet. And everybody's like, geez, I can't wait to hear that trumpet blast from heaven. No, you can't wait to hear God talk to you personally and then be caught up in the spirit to go to heaven. You're not waiting for a blast that the whole world is going to hear. And that actually goes along, and I don't really want to mention it, but I will, with my rapture dream that I had. You know, God talked with me right before he raptured me. And he said, was my son good enough? And I said, yes. And... I was like changed. I was portaled up to heaven and it was like I was in a movie theater. So I won't go too far into that because I know there's a lot of cuckoo stuff out there about dreams. But my point is that it's a voice from God. Now, there is so many false teachings out there that just get passed around. One of them is that there are three raptures. There are three raptures. When the Bible mentions nothing of the sort, there is one rapture, and then at the end, there is not a rapture. They're not raptured out at the end. There will be one that is in the field, and the other one will be taken. This is during God's wrath. That is speaking about people being taken to judgment. If you read Matthew 24, that is that is not talking about a rapture. It says, as in the days of Noah... And then it likens those things, which one is going to be taken and the other one is left, to the days of Noah and the flood. So the ones that are taken, taken into judgment. That's not a rapture. The ones that are left are the ones that God is not going to destroy. So you have the coming of the Lord in Matthew 24, which is the rapture. You have the same thing talked about in 1 Thessalonians 4. And you have the same thing talked about in Revelation chapter 4. But yet, people, there's this people online telling you there's three raptures? Three raptures. No, you just can't see it. It's the, it's the same, what's being done is the same event talked about in three different ways. Uh, just like the Gospels, how they go over the, the same stories sometimes, but they're talked about just in a little different way. That's all that's happening. It's the same event. It's being talked about three different ways. And like I said, Jacob's trouble is 42 months. This is another thing that people are stiff-necked about. In the rapture watcher community, horrible community, might I add. Yes, it's good to, you know, study and stuff. But what they're doing is gaslighting people. Telling them that we're, we're just about out of here now for like years. You know, and I put where I've come to at. And I, I put a disclaimer. I say, this is where I'm at. I believe the rapture is in 2025, Passover. More specifically, April 19th. But you don't have to believe it. That's where I'm at. What these guys are doing is pushing this stuff on the world, saying, we're all about out of here. Woo, here we go. It shows no wisdom. Being wrong all those times should have taught these gentlemen to be much more careful and at least have some shame. But there is not reverence for God in these guys. You know what they do? It's a big game. Oh, Barry Yawn got a minute and, you know, Bob Barr were just, well, mainly Barry Yawn got a minute. You know, they make these comedy skits like it's just a big fun game because they, they, they have no reverence for God. There's, there's a major, major problem with what they do. Now, they're telling you you're going to be out of here this year, okay? And you are not going to be out of here this year. I'd put it all on black that you are not going to be out of here. And the main thing is, do you, know, you, you don't want to, do you want to know why they think that? It's because they think that there's seven years left. Seven years left of Jacob's trouble. How can anybody think that there's seven years left of Jacob's trouble when Revelation says over and over, it's half of that. 
42 months, over and over, 42 months, 42 months, Revelation 12, and the dragon goes after the remnant of the woman for 42 months. That's Jacob's trouble. The, the woman is being chased by the dragon for 42 months. Even in Daniel chapter 12. Everybody just turn it to yourself. Look, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel 12 in the Old Testament tells you Jacob's trouble, trouble means tribulation, is 42 months. How did they get seven years? These people, these people are willfully ignorant because I've told them on videos. I know they've seen the videos. I've commented in their things over and over and over. We're already six months into the seven years. And they're still at it. They still won't admit it. Because they're afraid to admit that their doctrine is wrong. There's no rapture this year. And Jacob troubles 42 months. And that puts the rapture exactly where I'm saying. 2025. And then you have 42 months after that. And Christ comes back in 2029. Which is the end of the Shemitah. These, these guys, man. 